G'day, Ben. Hey, Ben. How's it going? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Thank you. How have you been? What have you been up to? I'm doing really well, thank you. Um, I've been spending a bit of time down in Colour Sound Recording Studio, run by Matt Robbins. Um, every every six months or so, just like when you have a lounge room at home, you feel the need to rearrange everything. So um, we're having that six monthly spring clean and uh, plugging everything in again, rerunning the cables. And he's just incorporated a new sub into his system. So we've just been playing around to get the most out of that. He actually came around to your studio the other day, Ben. He did. Um, to check out your delicious Atmos system and uh, felt inspired to have more low end in his room from it. So Yeah, well, I saw him posted that um, and I was a little bit worried that he's gone out and bought himself a Cali Audio <laughs> Dolby Atmos set up and then I'll be out of the job. But uh, no, I I actually want to come around and check it out, see what the sub sounds like because it's a bit of a beast, isn't it? Yeah, it sounds really good actually. It took a little while getting it to blend in and feel like it was part of the main system, which I think is half the art with in integrating a sub. But um, yeah, by the end, uh, it feels really natural and feels nice in that room. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, I've yeah. been obviously getting my Atmos set up tweaked and fine-tuned been enjoying some content um been working on this film uh, love mountain still um but yeah just cruising along as usual where um, would you say you are in the in the process of that film are you halfway through it or where oh, whereabouts? no very much the final mix stage so i sent it off oh, cool. um sent it off mostly for them to review the sound as a whole sort of it was a very quick 5.1 mix, 5.1 mix. Uh, so we're doing that one in 5.1. Uh, but I had a guy do a whole bunch of Foley. So I just kind of quickly got it in there, did a, a quick pass to kind of make it all fit. Uh, fortunately, he did some good editing and stuff. So it was kind of sitting generally pretty well. Sent it off and he's blown away. The director's blown away. So he, I think awesome. we've exceeded his expectations when it comes to sound and stuff. So the next job is to actually give it a good, couple of passes of mixing and uh yeah we'll see how we go from there but that's uh, going well. mixing in atmos or no nah, just surround for this one just surround just 5.1 for this one uh i wasn't set up for atmos at that point and i, I look the kind of movie and where it's going to go it's probably not worth doing an atmos mix on that one we kind of mm -hmm. didn't budget for that at the start so we're sticking with 5.1 uh, but it was actually cool. interesting because I watched it all back or some of it I was going through the notes and tweaking his notes that he already had, the director, and it sounded very different to, in my room than, not very different, but different enough than the previous when I had 5.1 and did a room correction. It's slightly different this time around. So mm -hmm. uh, I've fine-tuned it a bit, you know, the mix overall just to kind of go with the latest um calibration i did on this room so but yeah nice. coming along nice speaking of movies mm. uh you and i decided that tonight we will do something a little bit different and review some trailers so yes we both of us went and saw the flash the other day and it was great having a chat about that but we thought why not see what else is coming out this year um mm -hmm. some things have just been released and we thought why not have a watch do a bit of a thumbs up thumbs down we should probably have a Mid thumb as well. Middle as thumb, a, like might yeah. watch it. Yeah, looks I, okay. I, I don't know. Yeah, what does mid, middle thumb means? We'll go see it, but tentatively or mm -hmm. yeah, maybe. Um, yep. Thumbs down is definite no. Thumbs up. We're excited about it. Maybe that's mm -hmm. a we'll see it, but we're excited about it. Not into it. No fun. Um, that's fun. Yeah, and uh, I think generally we want to just talk about sort of the sound side of things, but. Yeah, I think Let's it'll be crack. interesting to chat through and get your opinions on uh, the approach on sound for trailers because there is a bit of a trailer style. There's a sound that trailers tend to like um, gravitate towards and it'll be interesting to see which trailers here feel similar and which trailers have their own unique sort of sound to them. Um, yeah, and I think the other thing with trailers too is it's not always – the, the team doing the trailer uh, generally just not at all a part of the film. So sometimes they'll grab their own sound effects for their own, from their own library. The score is sometimes a, a totally different composer or it depends on the film. 
Uh, but sometimes, you know, every, it's all made from scratch. They just get the vocal, the dialogue stems and all that sort of stuff. And they might get the composer to write a track specifically for the trailer. But for it depends on the, the film and the budget. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure someone like Christopher Nolan, you know, we're going to be watching Oppenheimer, but Christopher Nolan probably doesn't like his trailers to go out with sounds that haven't been used in the film or the score that's from somewhere else. So... Uh, it'd be interesting to see the vibes of each one as we go watch them. So, yep. All right. Well, let's jump into the first one. So, Oppenheimer. Did I say Oppenheimer? Big. Oppenheimer. Oh, Oppenheimer. I, <laughs> I, I don't actually know. don't know exactly how to say it. No. I should have watched an interview first before to see the pronunciation. Yeah. Um, but Christopher Nolan's big film of the year. So, uh, very excited to see this, which uh, I think we're planning on seeing this this week in the cinemas, so, uh, but let's check out the trailer. Glitchy, I like it already. This is a national emergency. Didn't need a charge. in a race against the Nazis. And I know what it means if the Nazis have a bomb. We have a 12-month head start. 18. How could you possibly know that? We've got one hope. I'm already All excited America's about industrial the uh, cast. Connected yeah. Here. It's an all-star, isn't it? Keep everyone there until it's done. Let's go recruit some scientists. Build a town, build it fast. We don't let scientists bring their families. We'll never get the best. Why would we go to the middle of nowhere for who knows how long? Why? Oh, the dialogue Why? sounds great. How about does this is the most important thing to ever happen in the history of the world? You're the great improviser, but this mm. you can't do in your head. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero. Near zero. <laughs> you want from theory alone. Zero would be nice. This is a matter of life and death. I can perform this miracle. World War II would be over. Our boys would come home. Visually, it looks amazing. Thing, isn't it? Mm. The world will remember this day. Our work here will ensure a peace mankind has never seen. Until somebody builds a bigger one. You are the man who gave them the power to destroy themselves. And the world is not prepared. Truman needs to know what's next. Two. What's next? One. What a lineup. That was cool. All right. Uh, our rating. So, do you want to talk about it first, or do we want to rate? Do we want to do our thumbs? Score? Uh, that's a great question. No, we rate it first, and then we talk about it. All right. Three, two, one. Yeah, obvious, great. obvious. Good. Watch. Very obvious. Yep. We're yep. both Nolan fans. Um, Big Nolan fans. Yeah, it's it's interesting with the trailers mixing, right? That they just like duck the music instantly under dialogue. Like it's just a hundred percent up, hundred percent down. You know, like as in, yeah, they want to make sure you hear every bit of dialogue, but they, you know, the way there's nothing gentle mixed, about no. that that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the ducking of the music is quite, uh, it's almost robotic. 
Um, yeah. Which it's a bit of a trend in trailers. It's it is. it's an accepted it thing. Um, I, I don't love it, but that when I mix a trailer, I just do it because that's the that's what people do, you know. Yeah. Uh, Music well, wise the for the trailer, I enjoyed a lot of that. I thought there was a lot of melodic content. It it wasn't just too. I guess being that the you know film is about a bomb, it it you know they didn't want to go with too many bomb sounds or big explosion impacts um, on the trailer to take away from the actual impacts when they're showing on screen. Yeah, but I, it's still I enjoyed very it. low though. Like very still low, a heavy, heavy sounding score. A lot of like rumble, a lot of big cinematic rumble. Mm. Um, you could tell that they were going, uh, you know, the traditional Hans Zimmer esque long build synth sounds. Even though it was Ludwig Göransson, Göransson who um, composed the music for this film. Oh, he did. Okay, he did. Yeah. Nice. So uh, I've a little disclaimer. I've been listening to the score all week because they often release the score either a week before the film comes out or the day of the film coming out. Um, and I just can't help myself to wait and to watch the movie, so I always have a quick sneak peek. And, yeah, and I've also been really enjoying it. Yeah, and also for you, then when you get to hear how they place it in the film because you've already heard the cues, you know. Yeah, yep. Uh, visually, um, I thought it looked stunning. I love the mm. colour palette. Um, yeah, cast is I did awesome. Hear, cast is great, yeah. I did yeah. hear... Um, Christopher Nolan mentioned in a few interviews that I've seen that uh, he didn't use any CGI in this film. This is any. So all the effects, any, he said zero. Even the explosions and stuff, they've apparently done all they're that all for in camera or using miniatures or using different in camera techniques to, to capture it. And he didn't want to use CGI for this story. So that's a hot tip. Uh, that's going to make me even more interested to see it. Uh, yeah. Just to see how they've. Got away with all that. That's awesome. Was there anything you didn't like in that trailer, Ben? Uh, no. I, I feel like for me it hasn't given away too much. I don't know if it just. That's a common for, problem in a lot of trailers. Yeah, isn't it? I feel like a lot of trailers they just give away a lot, but um, I I didn't feel like I you know it's going to be a long film, so at the end of the day, there's going to be so much stuff that we haven't seen in the trailer, but. For me, it didn't feel like it gave too much away, which is normally my concern with a trailer. Normally when I'm watching trailers, I when I get to the point that I'm in, I just turn mm. it off. And I wasn't even really planning to see this trailer until, you know, we decided to have this session because mm-hmm. uh, I knew I wanted to see it anyway because I'm a big Nolan fan. So, um, mm. but yeah, no no complaints. What about yourself? Uh, no, no complaints. Um, I I really, I enjoyed this, the intro sort of sequence that gave you little snippets of stuff. Uh, I thought it was really interesting using the sounds um, of the environments as sound design elements and giving you just a couple of fl- flicker frames, like just a few moments to read what was happening but then disappeared. Um, I like that. It kind of builds, it kind of pulls you in a bit to the trailer. Um, I thought that was executed really well. Yeah. Um, what do you think the sound was at near the end there? It sounded like almost like March steps or something or – you know, that built up, started slow and kept building up. Do you reckon they were marching steps or mm. almost sound like camera, sh- not like heavy shutter kind of sounds or something? Yeah. wonder whether that's It sounded all- cool. Yeah, it did. I'm wondering whether that was just the trailer team doing something or whether that be an element when we actually watch the film, but I guess we'll yeah. find out. We will find out. I enjoyed mm. that, yeah. I, I, I think any time you can create um, rhythmic elements that um, – symbolize something in the, on the screen is always fun. Yeah, well, did you notice, um, so with the that light, the lights, uh, obviously where they were doing the bomb testing, you had the, mm. shunk, the like the big heavy light switch, you know, that they always use and they kept that going big through. Big fan of the big heavy light switch. Yeah, yeah. Me, oh, oh, it's one of my favourite sounds. <laughs> uh, and, it, and it continued with the score in time with the score. So the first yeah. kind of couple went with the vision and then it just kept going with the score. I thought that was really, mm-hmm. and as you say, like a good use of, when sound design is in time with the music and stuff, it's it's always cool. Yeah. Nice. I wonder, is it is it sound design that's in time with the music or is it music that's in time with the sound design? Oh, this is the because chicken and the egg, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because <laughs> sometimes it could it could be either way. I know that projects that I've worked on had uh, – I worked on a su- little superhero um, uh, animation film. It was like half filmed, half animated, and there was a few – like impact moments in the fight sequences 
and I sort of marked out a few of them to be key downbeats of the music when that impact comes in. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't actually put any drums or percussion on the downbeat. It would just be musically the downbeat, knowing that there would be an impact sound done by the design team that would be my downbeat. Yeah, that's um, great. And uh, We call that being a good composer, everyone out there, because that's oh. <laughs> a composer who leaves space for the sound design. I love that. Yeah. Uh, nice. Well, anyway, definite watch. Uh, yep. We'll report back uh, on that one. Sounds good. Oh, Do you what want to introduce next? Second, <laughs> second trailer. Another big movie of the year. Yeah, that's it. Also, Christopher Nolan. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> or should we just get into it? I, I, honestly, right. for this one, I'm actually really keen. I, yeah. I, I think I've seen the trailer at the cinemas, but I'm not 100% sure. But me and my wife, I'm really keen to see it with her. So let's have a watch yep. anyway. All right, see what it's about. Hey, Barbie. Clever, because Barbie's feet are always Can like I that. Can come to your house today? Yeah. Sure. I don't have anything big planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. So cool. You can find me under the lights, diamonds under my eyes. This is the best day ever. It is the best day ever. So is yesterday, and so is tomorrow, and every day from now until forever. Yeah. Already into the music. You guys ever think about dying? <laughs> When my heart breaks Some things have been happening that might be related When my world shakes Cold shower Ooh. falling off my roof ah! And my heels are on the ground <gasps> Black feet! <laughs> I've got flat feet too I feel you, yeah. Barbie no, Yeah, me too right. You have to go to the real world you can go back to your regular life, or you can know the truth about the universe. I'm all about the sandal. <laughs> it's now yours. The, first the old one, the high heel. Matrix. You have to want to know. Okay. No, Do it again. I'd be Closer in the comfortable sandal for sure. Closer I'm coming with you. Okay. This is the real world. <laughs> What's going on? Why are these men looking at me? Yeah, they're also staring at me. <laughs> Barbie in the real world. That's impossible. If this got out, this could mean extremely weird things for our world. This would be catastrophic! We haven't played with Barbie since we were like five years old. Oh. No one rests until this doll is back in a box. Even if nobody else sings along. Humans only have one ending. Get that Barbie! Ideas live forever. No, I won't let you do just one appendectomy. But I'm a man. But not a doctor. Can I talk to a doctor? You are talking to a doctor. Can I need a clicky pen? No. A sharp thing? No. There he is. Doctor! Somebody get security. <laughs> is Bobby boot if you're still in doubt? All right. <laughs> Oops. Oh. Uh, All right. So, rating. Yeah. Uh, thumbs rating. All right. You're going to count us in? Three, two, one. Oh, you're into it. Yeah, let's watch it. I think it'd be oh, fun. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> look, look, I originally, when I heard about it, I didn't go, that's for me. But hearing uh, and seeing the response that the internet has had to it, yeah, I think it would, um, as a movie lover, um, it would be um, the wrong thing to not watch it. Yeah. I'd have to agree. Uh, but look, again, Great cast. I love the funky tune there. That was great. I don't actually know. I was trying look, to I love think disco. who that could be. Yeah, I was trying to think who that could be. But mm. um, yeah, look, I don't have much to say about that. It was everything I expected. All the the chime bells, you know, all the mm -hmm. glistening and stuff. It's what I would expect from a, a trailer. Um, it's the kind of film that um, likely has a lot of tunes in it. Yeah, I'm um, sure. I'm they, curious yeah. to see if there's much score. Or if it's more tune base. 
Um, yeah, that'd be interesting oh. to find out if they just jam packet full of pop tunes that they want to, you know, I'm sure Warner Brothers have a bunch of artists they want to spruik their music. So they mm-hmm. use this as, a, as an opportunity to get a lot more of their music out there. Um, mm-hmm. But no, I, I think, uh, look, it's the quality of the film, you know, the dialogue all sounded fantastic. I'm sure like any big budget film, it's had the A team doing all mm-hmm. the sound and stuff. So, you know, it's not, it's going to be quality when it comes to the sound design. And I'm sure, as you say, the music, it'd be interesting to see if their score, but it's going to be jam packed full of great tunes. Although you're not much yep. of a pop man, are you, mate? But, you know, you'll just have to get into it. I don't mind disco. I don't <laughs> mind a bit of funk and disco. So if it's the poppy, disco y vibes, uh, uh, you know, I could get around it. Do you feel like this trailer gave too much away? I feel like we kind of know the story now. Well, it's interesting because I didn't know what the story was before watching this. I also still feel like I don't know what the story is. Yeah, okay. Like, we know Barbie like, goes to the real world. Barbie's and in the real know, world. Yeah. But what ha- what really happens, I don't really know. Like, Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mattel, we know honest, Mattel is uh, the company is going to try and capture her, but that's about it, right? Like, Yeah. I guess my question is in terms of like the film structure is what is the predicament that what is the tragedy or what is the the uh, challenge that the characters need to go through wasn't really shown in the trailer for me. So I'm curious yeah. to see what that tragedy that they need to overcome is. Yeah. I think um, even so. for them having the, like a lot of the sets are going to be obviously built man-made sets and then obviously they go into the real world and looks like it they're looks in like LA. a lot of projection i reckon there's a lot of sets there that are actually um, the backdrops of projection and stuff i reckon yeah. so yeah just looking at some of the lighting um yes. it so it'd be interesting to see polished. like it'd be interesting to hear if the dialogue then is really clean for that sort of stuff but the good thing i guess with these outfits and these days a lot of uh sound recorders are great at hiding mics within outfits and things so you know, I'm I'm sure we can expect that the dialogue's going to be crisp as throughout this. So, yeah, yeah, cool. Yep. I think it might surprise us. I yep. think, yeah, um, I'm so curious we're gonna to, have to uh, have a chat yeah. after watching it with you. I was going to say we're going to have to do some reviews of all these for sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if we're missing one that you want us to do a review of, let us know in the comments. Uh, yeah. What what you want us to check out and what your what film are you excited for this year? Um, Sounds Moving good. on to the next one, another film that I'm excited about. Not to give anything away yet, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I won't even say it. I'll just hit play and, and we'll uh, nah, nah, it's talk all good. about it after. All right, here we go. Our lives are the sum of our choices. cannot escape the past. Ethan, this mission of yours... Great on uh, anamorphic lenses. You yeah. Dearly. Always beautifully shot, these the world films. Is changing. Yeah, visually it's is very vanishing. impressive. War is coming. I always love hearing them do new arrangements of the classic tunes, classic score. You've no idea the power I represent. It knows your story and how it ends. I still have no idea how Tom Cruise still looks young. Listen to me. The world's coming after you. His fate is written. Lots of Dutch tilts. Shall we write yours too? If anything happens to them, there's no place that I won't go to kill you. That is written. I remember seeing the behind the scenes for this. He literally launches off a ramp for real. Are you saying he did that? Yeah. And Actually? He did about, and about 10 times. Ethan, what's your objective? He's been known to do his own stunts as much as possible, hasn't he? So. Yeah. Your life will always matter more to me than my own.
fair amount of CG in it, though. None of yeah. our lives can matter more than this mission. I don't accept that. Part one as well, nice. All right, um, well, that was the stark opposite of the previous one. Yeah, <laughs> that's um, true. What did you like about that? All right, we're going to do our three, oh, two, yeah, sorry. one. Yeah. Uh, big fan of the Mission Impossible films, so of course I'm keen to see it. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, look, it's a lot of that, as I said, there's a fair amount of CG in that, CGI, and it didn't. not all of it looked great like the explosion of the train on the bridge and stuff. But I guess yeah. uh, I'll hold my judgment until we actually see the film. Uh, always a fan of the uh, score. Uh, the Mission Impossible theme's great. And I'm I'm a big fan of hearing stuff rewritten, particularly for mm. trailers. I like hearing like the most epic version of scores and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I, look, I'm really excited to see it. I'm sure, again, the action, the sounds are going to be beautiful. The score's going to be great. I don't actually know. Do you know who scored this one? I don't know who scored this one. Okay, There's been well, a few we'll, different composers of the Mission Impossible yeah, well, franchise. We'll, we'll find time, out before, so. Yeah, we'll find out before we have a proper chat about that one. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, so as I was saying to you, that scene where he rides the motorbike up and over the hill, so there is computer-generated graphics in that, but he actually drove up a ramp and fl flew off it. I think they said it was something like seven or ten times and he kept wow. doing it. And you just kept doing it until they had it. Um, so they shot it with multiple cameras, had multiple drones in the air. But they obviously then turned the ramp into the mountain. And as mm -hmm. he goes off the hill, that shot is all one shot following over the hill. And they did some sky and ground replacements. So I think some of the mountains aren't real, but he actually sure. legitimately went straight off a cliff and did it mm. lots of It was of probably times. his choice. No, to want sure. to do that for sure because he he's a kind of a madman in that he respect. is a madman and um, an old madman but i feel bad to say that but he's i don't know how he still looks like he does when he's like isn't he 60 now i'm pretty sure he's 60 years old yeah definitely in his 60s uh, crazy um, incredible but um yeah. obviously looks after himself and um has the best team around him to help him look after himself as well yeah um, sucking the blood out of young people i'm sure yeah possibly Mm. Um, but, uh, trailer wise music and sound design was cool. There was a section at the end that was just music and there was a lot of action and they didn't have any sound design that I felt that it was odd. Yeah. Okay. So that was the only bit that caught my attention in a negative way. I thought everything was pretty good. Is that um, where they had the horns doing the bump, 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 bump? Yeah. That, yeah. And I think I they wanted, they, just, they wanted yeah. the theme to be strong and stuff, but I would have still had the sound design there just mixed lower underneath yeah. it. It just kind of felt like we didn't have any sound to the picture, which felt a bit odd to me. And if I'm really picking, the first line of dialogue sucked in tone. It wasn't very good. But the rest yeah, okay. of it sounded pretty good. Yeah. So, but uh, that's me being um, picky. And that's I what we're say. here to do. So, But, um, yeah, looks like a fun film. Um, I feel like I know with an Ambition Impossible film, like I'm – I'm going to get exactly what I expect. Yeah. Lots of action. I feel like I need to go Great back and watch. Great theme songs. I feel like I should go back and watch the previous one, although it probably doesn't, excuse me, probably doesn't matter with these movies, right? Like they're all. They're all kind of individual stories, aren't they? Yeah. Although this is part one, so maybe the next few are linked in some way. Mm. Not sure. We'll soon see. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm into it. All right. Yeah. This next one I have um, no idea about. Um, it's a Walt Disney either. studio um, film, uh, Haunted Mansion. This is a, um, but uh, it was on the list of movies coming out this year. So we, and you know, yeah, and we can't add a horror into our watch. So yeah, and we can't have stuff that we definitely going to watch. I feel like the list so far has been, you know, they're all ticks, and I feel like we need yeah, some stuff that yeah. might not be a tick. It, it is going to be tricky though because we are film lovers, so it's likely we're going to want to watch everything. Um, yeah, but. Yeah, let's see what Haunted Mansion's about. Sounds good. All right. I might do this, though, Wait. just so you know. 
I should warn you, before you step inside the house, this could change the course of your entire life. I'm not afraid of a couple ghosts. <laughs> you say that now. Very teal and orange look. Mm. Which I, I, don't, I like. I think it's a fine look. This mansion is unhinged. <laughs> These ghosts definitely don't want to leave. Death lurks around every corner. Yeah, Danny. God, give us a break. There's so many bad people in the world. Haunt them. <laughs> Amen. I do like Isn't it funny how certain actors just make you laugh this? when you see them? Yeah. Do we're in a fight, whether we like it or not. Or else we're stuck here for eternity. Yeah, if this comes down to an exorcism, we're in big trouble. <laughs> this house is dripping with souls, but there's always room. For one more. My friend was mugged. He was tall. He had hair that was sticking out of a what it? Top hat. Top, top hat. Yes. He had, yeah. yeah so nice. like top hat. You would pull a rabbit out of it, probably. Uh, <laughs> eyes. They were a bit uh, sunken. Deep sunken eyes. Like a raccoon. Beady eyes. They sat back. Hmm. And he was smiling like, hey, yeah, like that. This kind of thing. Exactly. Is this the man who mugged you? Wow. Oh. You just did that oh. just now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Interesting. All right. Three. Oh, wait, I've got to think about it. Uh, three, two, one. Oh, he's gone side. Okay. All right. I actually didn't, like, I wasn't that into the story, but I'm like, sound wise and stuff, and visually, it was pretty, like, you know, it, visually, they did a lot with it. Sound wise, mm -hmm. I just feel like it's going to be a great sounding film uh but maybe that i should be more strict about it because that's enthusiastic right Are that's saying... enthusiastically like definitely gonna watch it and gonna no, gonna no. enjoy All it right. i'm gonna change it then. this is still um, this is still like i i would watch it but yeah okay look yeah if I... there's nothing else on and we need a film to watch i'll definitely go and see it but i let's go yeah i'm gonna change it because it doesn't yeah. like story-wise and stuff although like i'm a big fan of danny devito because i love um it's always sunny in Philadelphia and he's in that and he's mm -hmm. hilarious. So, you know, yeah, he's good a great cast. Actor. Um, good cast. I, I, uh, I didn't know much about it. I wasn't expecting it to be a comedy for some reason, even though it's Disney, I should have expected it to be being that it's a horror Disney. Yeah. Doesn't look scary to really, no, to be honest. No, no, no. It's like kids, kid level scary. Yeah. It's um, like if you're watching like, cause it's made by the same crew that made Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. It's yeah. like if you watched that and you thought it was scary, it's that kind of level. It of kind of makes me think scariness. of Ghostbusters. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a haunted mansion instead of, well, it's not, there's kind of ghosts, but like it just kind of gives me that, that kind of vibe where it's, there's some funny dialogue moments. They've got some funny actors involved. So yeah. there's that. And, and the thing about comedy too is sometimes it's not even the script that's inherently funny that they've just cast it really well with actors that we already expect to be funny and yeah. we're ready to laugh. Yeah. And then when we see them, we're ready to laugh. Like um, a couple of actors are so bad with actors' names, but the gentleman that's um, – Is it Owen uh, Wilson? Sort of Is it Owen oh, Wilson, that's it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like he, for some reason, the second I see him, I'm just ready to laugh. Like, yeah. It's probably just all the movies you. I've watched him in in the past. He's been funny and I'm just ready, ready for yeah. whatever he serves up. So it, it'll be a fun movie. But it's not going to be a movie that's going to change my way of thinking about life. Nah, uh, it's kind of pro it'll be one of those movies that I'm like, let's save our money and just come and watch it in here. Assuming it'll be Dolby Atmos and we can listen to it in here. Uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. If we watch everything that we watch on this podcast, we 
won't have any money to produce this podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> so true. Well, and the other um, thing is some movies, we're going to have to probably see it twice anyway because I actually think for things like Oppenheimer or, you know, ones we really like, I'd love to hear it in my studio where me too, we really actually. get to hear the Dolby Atmos mix in its almost purest form because it's a mm. well-treated room, a very small, sweet spot. I feel like a cinema, sometimes you miss it and it's not cal calibrated well or whatever. You know, even when the we watch- The different experiences aren't there. Like sometimes a cinema yeah. has a nice size to it and an energy with the audience. Yeah. But hearing what I've heard so far in your studio, there's a fidelity and a detail in there. Yeah. Well, that, even the other day, oh, sorry, you finished what you're saying. I was like, just going to say, just to finish it off, um, that I think smaller rooms with studio monitors in a calibrated space gives you that detail, that focus to the sound. Mm. Whereas in the cinemas, it has a size to it. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, we watched The Flash, which, you know, we enjoyed, but we complained quite a bit about the Dolby Atmos-ness of it or lack of. Yeah. And then, you know, we listened to the score in my studio and the thing like there's synths and things shooting around you and stuff and it's it sounded so much phenomenal. More. Yeah, so I feel like even yeah. that could be a movie that we should just go back and watch again, whether we, you know, maybe do a follow-up chat about it on a podcast. But, um, yeah, I, I definitely want to rewatch a bunch of stuff and even things that I've seen in probably the last couple of years that I either didn't get to see Dolby Atmos or did and want to just hear what that's it's like now, mm. you know, in my space. Um, yeah. there, there's a great, uh, probably two thirds, three quarters into the trailer. I loved that. we like cut the, we'll cut shots and each one kind of had a different person screaming or a monster mm -hmm. like making a noise. And it kind of was like, you know, half seconds of like, a, ah, Oh, you know, all these like, and they picked a sound that really like went with every shot or, you know, I'm sure, I'm not sure if it was from the actual scenes or they added them in, but I quite liked that. Just the kind mm. of quick, quick cuts of screams and, you know, monster sounds and whatever. That was really cool. Yeah. Music wise, lots of choir, uh, lots of big brass sections. It didn't, I can't, I couldn't sing the melody or anything to you so to me it was a bit more of a sort of generic trailer-esque type feeling but it was big and uh lots of lots of choir which makes things feel dramatic yeah but um yeah i don't really have too much else to say about this one it uh, looks like a fine movie um <laughs> that we might movie. see it's just fine you know <laughs> yeah yeah no, that's um, fair but it's good to throw something else in the mix um yeah but you yeah, know well a few things trailer. in there that we don't know yeah, it was a oh, yeah, you can't fault yeah. the technicality of it all. The tech. Yeah. Um, I feel like uh, cinematography wise, very teal and orange, very of that look, um, which is quite a common look for a lot of Hollywood movies because it, it's very complimentary. Mm. Um, and so I think teal it works in the for backgrounds, the... orange skin tones, and orange yeah. details and stuff like that. And the ghosts, because they're kind of glowing white, it already works because it's kind of in that. You know, keeps it all same same yeah. vibe. Yeah, and a lot of so. the movies are also at night, so blue is a great light yep. to use to simulate that, and candles and all the warm looking light sources. Yeah. So, and it's a great um, contrast for like that last scene where they're at the police station explaining who the person was that robbed them or whatever. To then when you go in the real world or not in the haunted house, it's like here it is, nice and warm and bright, and you know, it yeah. gives you that heavy contrast between the two. So, yeah. Mm. Cool. All right. Should we do another one? <clears throat> yeah, let's do another one. I'm excited about this one. Yeah, let's just let's just play it and chat about it afterwards. This world is beyond cruelty. We've been yeah. fighting the Harkonnens for decades. My family's been fighting them for centuries. So they're actually using the sounds Massacre. from the score in this trailer. Alongside my father. Your father didn't believe in revenge. We believe in Fremen. Let me fight beside you. Reload! Dahashi, Fadizir. He said that. I got that. Thanks. I won't be fighting for him. I'm fighting for my people. 
You young pup. Do you believe in Paul? There are signs. The prophet. Why is that a bad thing? Use it. Because all my visions lead to horror. Because you lose control. Because I gain it. Johnny, do you believe in me? Paul Atreides is still oh, alive. Love that percussion. Mm. Hey, it's that guy. Deal with this prophet. Show me who you are. Your father. Very strong color palettes, isn't there? Yeah. It's rich. It was a weak man. Look who's back from the dead. Now do what must be done. We gave them something to hope for. That's not hope! Johnny! I will love you as long as I breathe. This prophecy is how they enslave us! It's not a prophecy. It's a story. I don't care what you believe. I believe. Diva Duke of Arrakis! Under the blue sea of He who can destroy a thing has the real control of it. Hmm. All right. Three, two, one. Yeah. Easy win. Easy, Easy yes. win. Yeah. Look, I was. I love the first one. Yeah. Big fan of the first big... one. Yeah. I think, like, for the thing I love about this, well, about the first one, and even it's going to be the same in the second, is just visually and obviously, like, audibly, I think the score as well, they've just picked a tone and they've run with it. Like between the costumes, the architecture, it all just fits so well together. And then the score on top of that, you just, it has its style nailed to a T, I reckon. Mm. Um, like I actually tried to listen to the audio book of this and it's really hard to not read it. So I listened to it and it's really hard not to read it because there's so many families and, you know, the house of this, house of that. And it's actually, if you're not reading it, it's really hard to retain who's mm -hmm. who. And so I actually gave up on the first book and I think I need to go back and actually read them. Um, mm. But I'm, yeah, just really excited to to see how this, like the story plays out. And I think we should definitely, before we see this, you should come over and we should watch June 1, Dolby Atmos mm. in my space as well. That'd be um, fun because I actually missed it in the cinemas. So I've only listened to the film in stereo, um, uh, the first one that is. Yeah, I'm um, sad for you, mate, because I had listened to it. I watched it and listened to it in Dolby Atmos and that percussive thing that Hans did, that da -da 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 -da, or whatever, like that in the cinema, oh, my goodness. Yeah. It was next level. It's really great. There's some great docu uh, short interview pieces with Hans and some of the key musicians who worked on the score. Um, talking about the music. So if you'd like the music of it, check, give that a YouTube. Yeah, um, I will have to. Making of. Yeah. There's um, the the, uh, the singer who you was featured near the end mm -hmm. um, and some of the percussion and also a flute player. Um, Is that what that was at the very end? Is that like a wood flute? Like it almost has yeah. that oboe kind of vibe about it. Like yeah, it's reedy these big, kind of. It's yeah. these big flutes and the. Uh, I don't want to hack the story. You definitely check it out. Uh, maybe maybe we'll link one or two of them below if, if we remember. Um, but there was one where the flute um, player was talking about Hans challenged him to make the sound of wind blowing over the sand dunes on his flute was the brief to the – so he started playing the flute and he said, no, there's too much note. I want it to be the, the wind 
over the sand dunes. And so he was just kind of blowing air through the flute in a way that would feel like sand dunes gusting that they used as a, almost a sound design music element in the score, yeah. um, which I thought was really cool. And they also came up with their own language and their own sort of melodic scale that the singer would sing in for it to feel um, ancient but also in the future because obviously it's set in the future but it's, yeah. there's also an ancientness about it. Yeah, that's so, cool. Um, yeah, they wanted to come up with a sound like what would the – they wouldn't be singing in like, you know, a blues minor scale or something <laughs> like that. So they've got their own music sort of movement to it. And it was interesting listening to the music of the trailer. At first when I first heard it, I thought, oh, okay, maybe Hans or Hans's team scored the trailer. And they may have, but uh, what I think is uh, they would have got some stems from the score and then they did their own thing. And that, for me, became apparent near the end. Of, uh, there was like some really clear high production sounding stuff with the singer that came in. Yeah. But then some pretty average sounding string ostinatos alongside it that I was like, that's not Hans. There's no yeah. way that sound is Hans. Yeah. So, um, I'll have to go back I, and watch I'm, it again and listen to it with that critical ear. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. feel like, um, it, like the performance of the ostinatos were fine, but I'm like, that is not a sound that Hans would have approved. Yeah. So, um, but I thought I really liked the music from the original Dune to be in this trailer or, or music from the new Dune in this trailer because to me it like really puts me in that sound world um, while watching it. It all felt so cohesive. It didn't feel like a typical um, like Hollywood trailer with generic music. It felt like part of the story. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Which I, I thought was a really big asset to it. Which is key to a film like this. It is about its look and its sound and, you know, you wouldn't want to just get anyone to just come up with a Dune-like Dune track and, and just stick it in there. Mm. I think the marketing team have the budget and know that it's worth giving us what we want and that's Hans's score, you know, like at least the mm. character of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, visually though, like very much, as beautiful. I said before, beautiful and I love the, you know, that white... The, where they do uh, that ball guy was fighting and stuff like these real stark contrasts, mm. which makes sense. You know, even Star Wars probably gets a little blendy at times, but even with the, your Star Wars, you kind of like each planet has its own vibe or its look or its suns. And, you know, yeah. even on Earth, we're all, we've got beautiful, different skin and all that sort of stuff. But this is the extreme, you know, like who knows what kind of planet they're on, what their oxygen levels are, all these kind of things that might make up a different looking human or humanoid character. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, and that's the one thing, even in the original, I loved the architecture in that film. Like it was just the the sets were just out of control. Um, it, it's it, interesting it, even like you watch this film and to me none of this CG stuff was that obvious, like compared to even say Mission Impossible and maybe it's this thing of what what's in the real world, you know, when – in Mission Impossible to have a train crash and explode a whole bridge would be expensive, so they've just done it with CG. And because it's the real world and we know what it should look like, that's probably makes it a bit harder for them to make it more realistic where that's a good point. It, yeah. in a world where you don't recognise it so much, they can get away with a bit more. But I also just think the quality, I'm sure the budget for this is a lot higher than even Mission Impossible, but I could be wrong. I think it's a good point actually, like in a – in a film like this where everything is different, the costumes are different, the way that people dress and the, you know, the um, jewellery and the bracelets and the air air pipe to the nose and yeah. the set looking different. Everything's so different that almost your eyes can't pick out things that are different because it's all different. So it's just yeah. like a, um, whereas you're right, watching something that's more like in a city that's more naturalistic, your eye will just see the thing that doesn't belong Yeah, easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's really good. I never thought of it like that. But I think you're right. Thinking about all the films, like all the, a lot of sci-fi films where they're set in a place that, as far as we can tell, don't exist yeah. or that we haven't been. I've never really noticed the CG, but I do notice CG in, um, yeah, traditional films that are set in London or set in New yeah, York yeah. City or whatever. Yeah. So really interesting. Um, yeah, I'd watch it. Mate, I'm pumped for it to be honest uh and now, i can't wait look, to listen to june 
uh, we'll watch June one in here. So I've got yeah. to first get a couch and then we'll uh, have some movie sessions yeah. in here. It'd be nice to sit somewhere. Um, so let's do that in that order. Um, look, <laughs> I, I, lo- I dialed up one more trailer just to see if we were feeling it, but I'm feeling it. So I think, I think we yeah, should let's watch do one it. more. Yeah, one more. Why not? Um, we'll give it one more because uh, this one, I really liked this trilogy. I don't know about you. No, I did too. I, I was a big fan. I, I thought this was a really great, really great story. Um, and I'm really excited for this next one. Uh, so I'm just going to hit play and you'll see what it is soon. to introduce to you the creator of the Hunger Games themselves, Dean Casca Highbottom. I have summoned you all here for the 10th annual reaping ceremony, in which we choose two children from each district to fight to the death in the Hunger Games. From District 12, Lucy Gray Baird. There has been a change this year. As a mentor, Mr. Snow, your role is to turn these children into spectacles, not survivors. What does my mentor do besides bring me roses? I do my best to take care of you. You really want to take care of me in that arena? Start by thinking I can actually win. I'm Lucky Flickerman, first ever host of The Hunger Games. Enjoy the show. Bye. Four, Enjoy the show. Three, two, Enjoy the show. Run. Enjoy the show. What happens in there? Fueled with the terror of becoming prey. See how quickly we become predator? See how quickly civilization disappears? Love the retro vibes. There's a natural goodness built into us all. We can step across that line into evil or not. You hear that, boy? It's the sound of snow falling. How wonderful that we all get to be here for someone's final performance. It's not just about winning. Everything is about winning. You're monsters! All of you! <laughs> Titles are very generic, aren't they? Hey! Probably matches the originals, though. It's the things we love most that destroy us. Interesting. All right. Before we okay. talk about it, mm. three, two, one. Nah, still going to see it. Look, I'm going to see it. Sidewards is I'm still going to see it. But I was kind of hoping for a bit more, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, that's fair. It just did. You know what? This trailer didn't give me the sense of danger. This trailer didn't give me the sense of of gravitas is this a prequel was, it, is that the idea a, uh, i don't I, believe so i'm, I'm not confused, sure I haven't, I haven't looked at it the old school vibes of the screens and things like that in my mind is this meant to be because i this is one thing i've watched the trailer and i wasn't 100 percent sure because they were showing the guy who created it um is it I, I is this the prequel i think that's what it is this is like one of the first Hunger Games. Okay. But maybe it is. Could maybe be wrong. It is. This is how much yeah. neither of us concentrated well enough. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I don't know. I just um I we'll felt look like it, it was very pretty. I love the cinematography. Yeah. Uh, the imagery was super sharp. I love the choice of lenses, lots of like wide lenses with the camera close to people. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I like that. Um but there was a in the previous Hunger Games, there was a darkness, a sense of like, there, 
I just didn't feel like anyone was on the edge of dying there for some yeah. reason. I just didn't feel that. That's all very fair to it. say. I agree with you there. But, like, for me, I love the first three. Uh, I love the retro vibe, so all the retro screens and, you know, almost Art Deco kind of, mm. I think it's Art Deco, kind of vibes of the the film and the sets and stuff. Um, but to me, this is going to be one of those films that's going to sound and look big and you'll want to see it in the cinemas. But yeah. story-wise, I'm with you on that. Like I, I'm, I, I again, for me, I don't always care that much about the story of a film, which probably sounds <laughs> bad, but I can be very well entertained by a film's sound and vision and mm-hmm. that's enough for me to at least be happy to see it. Um, yeah. You know, even like Flash, but Flash ended up being a pretty good story. I actually quite enjoyed the storyline and the mm-hmm. um, so you know. But no, I'm definitely I'm still keen to see it. I'm, I'm definitely it's not up there with Oppenheimer, Barbie, or even Mission Impossible. Uh, like I'm not into the story as I would be those, but I think mm. it's going to be one of those films you got to see. But yeah. we definitely should. It'll, work it'll be out. a lot of fun. I'll come and see it with you. Yeah, um, yeah. I hope. We got- um, James Newton Howard scored it, who scored the previous Hunger Games. I think he did a fantastic job. I'm a big fan of his music. Um, the music that you heard in this trailer is nothing at all like the score. Yeah, I, was I don't about even to know if they touched you. on a melody yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, there were some parts in there that I thought were pretty cool, some cool percussion rhythms and stuff. I saw there was a moment that you you enjoyed. Yeah, yeah, in I was the nodding sort of the last thing. third. Yeah, the clacks. Um, you love you. Yeah, you love your drum clacks and your drum yeah. rhythms and stuff yeah. like that, ensembles and um you know, that's actually growing on me too. You're making me enjoy that a lot more than <laughs> I used to. But um, I did. I was just like, oh, come on, just bring something from the actual score yeah. into the trailer, like something to tie it. 100% until the clack bit, which I was enjoying, I was like, this to me just feels like a, the most generic trailer song. I feel bad for whoever wrote it, but it mm. is just like predictable trailer vibes for me. As you said, nothing really that memorable. Mm. Um, just everything you expect from a trailer track. I think really. there'll be a lot of cool Atmos opportunities um, in this film because even just hearing the trailer in the opening sequence, there's a lot of like great halls where they're announcing and talking to mm. like big pe- a lot of people in big spaces. That's a great Atmos opportunity to put you in the spaces. A lot of fight sequences that could be quite immersive. Yeah. Um, I do find so, though like when it's just a big cathedral with reverbs, mostly – just even 7.1 is enough for that to still feel mm. big unless they yeah. like bring the dialogue almost a bit above you to kind of make it a more announcer vibes or um, voice yeah. of God. Uh, I feel like, you know, those may be a bit hit miss, but definitely like I- I'm still yet to really, and this is going to be one of those things that I think when we start watching films in my space, we might start appreciating Dol- appreciate Dolby Atmos more. I feel like it's just not being used quite well enough at the moment so um mm. but you know we'll see yeah well yeah. lots of movies to see and this was just one uh, uh, i'm sure there's many more movies coming out this year that we're going to have to do another episode like this and see what we want to see but if um if you're excited about something let us know uh let us know what you want us to talk about and um i think uh, later this week we might have to go see Oppenheimer for the first we one might. To- yeah yeah yeah, it'll be interesting. Maybe some of these we'll just watch at my place or something. Um, as you said, we can't. It's going to get expensive if we see a film every week or every, you know, mm, two As weeks fun as it go. would be. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but I also do want to do some comparisons. It would be nice that maybe in a few months' time we've seen a few films both in the theatre and at MySpace and actually we could do a Dolby Atmos, whether it's working in a cinema conversation. Mm. Um, yeah. It, yeah, it'd be interesting to we'll do to a we'll do a Hoyts it. versus Benz comparison. Yeah, there you video. go. And I'll start charging <laughs> tickets. Come to my space; it'll be hundred bucks. Yeah. You can watch a movie. Yeah, two yeah. tickets at a time. And popcorn's three hundred dollars a box. So, yeah, but you you use real butter. So, <laughs> oh no no no, <laughs> no. <laughs> you'll get a packet of uh, pre bought popcorn from of off the shelf microwave. Coles. Yeah, yeah, microwave popcorn. Hey, microwave popcorn's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Actually, my local IGA does fresh popcorn out of a popcorn machine, so I'll get some oh, yeah. of that. There you go. I'm a, you know what? I'm a classic uh, fry pan, pot on the stove, kernels in there. Do you then, put uh, foil over the top? 
How do you? Uh, oh, you, sorry, a pan, a saucepan with a lid, right? Saucepan. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Classic. Um, and then uh, melt the butter on the pan too. I don't like microwaves, so I don't really use them. So it's uh, it's all over the heat, and then you pour it. I like the butter to be peppered, just to okay. Yeah, you know, it's it adds a, like a peppery. Funny enough, pepper adds a pepperiness to it that's quite desirable. Um, so you know, if you've never had it like that, I would recommend a bit of pepper on your butter, on your popcorn. Are you a fan and of? Always, you go. I was just gonna say. Always melt twice the amount of butter that you think you are. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're actually putting the butter in, you're like, geez, that's a lot of butter. Like maybe I should stop. No, you shouldn't stop. You're having popcorn, watching a movie. If you're going to ch- have a cheat meal and have a moment, just go the whole hog. Yeah. That's what I think. I agree. Uh, one thing that I've done before, are you a fan of buffalo wings like uh, Frank's Hot Sauce? Absolutely. So I, I love put hot Frank's Hot Sauce on popcorn once. And it, it, I can't, re- I think there was a recipe my wife saw on Instagram or something and I had tried it and it was fucking amazing. All right. So, well, we know what we're doing when we watch something at yours. Yeah, we're going to do very buttery um, popcorn with a side of Frank's hot sauce popcorn. Can we also have some wings? Yes. In fact, we should start with wings. I love that. Yeah. That's a great idea. And yeah. chug it down with some red wine. Not that they all go together, but we need to have a drink and that's yeah. our drink Look, of choice. I wouldn't say no. Mm-hmm. Say no. So. All right, mate. Cool. Well, this has been fun. Something a bit different. And yep. I'm look, I'm sure we've only, you know, scratched the surface of films that are coming out. So let's do another one of these in the, uh, I don't know, month's time or something. Uh, maybe once we've seen a couple of these few movies or a few of these movies, I think let's uh, do this again. Sounds good. Cool, yeah, man. Mate. Have a great week. You too. Bye. See ya.